You've got a tune to KEXP. We are listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming around the world at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters down here in the KEXP Performance Studio with Soccer Mommy. Welcome. Hey. I'm so excited to hear you play these songs live. Thanks. First one's called Your Dog. That is Soccer Mommy live on KEXP, a brand new album called Clean, that song called Your Dog. I cannot hear that song enough. It is on constant repeat. Our listeners are also loving it. I'm almost all tempted to ask you to just play it again. Just play that the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes. I put it on repeat and just play it over and over. That one's just so catchy. Such an earworm. Thank you. I'm going to play another one called Flaw. Just a flaw 
that often happen all along I'm thinking love would be that Talking to your friends for hours You slipped in kisses on my mouth I tried my best to work it out I took you swimming by my house Skinny dip and rip my flowers out Live in the KEXP studios, it's Soccer Mommy playing songs from the new album, Clean. And it's so fantastic to have you here today. Sophie, thanks for coming in with the band. Yeah, thank you so much. Again, they're playing tonight at the Doug Fir in Portland. And it seems like music's been a part of your life pretty much all of your life. You started yeah. playing pretty young. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your journey. Um, yeah, I started playing when I was like five. I got like a toy guitar um, at a benefit concert and just started writing on it enough that my parents got me like a real acoustic guitar and lessons after that. And then I just continued lessons throughout high school um, and started making the soccer mommy music right at the end of high school before I went to college. And you were the one drawn to that guitar. A lot of times people get uh, an instrument as a gift, but mm -hmm. at five years old, I heard you pointed at that and said, I want that. Yes. What do you um, feel like it was like putting out your music um, by yourself? Now you're playing with a band, but you did it by yourself for quite a while. Mm -hmm. You recorded your own music initially on your phone, and then you upgraded to a four-track recorder, and then you released your own music. So you did it for your, by yourself for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's not that different from now, um, just because all the writing I still do alone. Um, but it's definitely stepped up, like, the recording process and the live music part of it. Um, and I think it's really cool to get to experiment with a band and, like, have people bring in their own ideas and with whatever they want to play on their instrument and kind of get a sound based off of that. And you worked with a producer on this record, and I had heard that you weren't initially sold on that idea. So how did you connect with Gabe Wax, and what was that experience like, and how did you decide, yeah, I want to I wanna do this? Yeah, um, I think he emailed my manager, or not my manager, my A&R person, and, like, came to a show, and we got coffee, just because I was like, might as well. 
Um, and he just had really great ideas, and we seemed to, like, gel really well creatively. So I figured we would try some demos with him, and we did, and they sounded awesome. So I wanted to do the whole record with him. I don't think I would have done it with anybody else. That's really cool that he sought you out, went to a show. I mean, as I said, you did this early on, threw some songs up on Bandcamp, and it sounds like in interviews, you didn't really know how many people would listen, but a lot of people heard it. What has it felt like to put a piece of yourself out there and see so many people respond so positively? I mean, your fan base has really grown quite large. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I just never imagined that I would be having any fan base at all when I started. I thought, you know, maybe like a couple people would follow me and like it. Um, but I thought it would definitely be a private thing that wouldn't really get any attention. Not so private, but obviously you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's amazing. You grew up in the Nashville punk scene and then you moved to New York to go to school for a couple while, a couple years. Are you back in Nashville now? Yes, in we're that- all in Nashville. And what do you feel like you got out of that time spent in New York? I understand even though you grew up in the punk scene in Nashville that you didn't play your first show till you moved to New York. Yeah, um, I think it was it was a really like awesome like I made a lot of friends in New York, um, and I love New York. I think it's a really cool atmosphere, and I think the music scene there is amazing, and people are really supportive um, of you when you're trying to make a start. But Nashville's the same way for sure. Like people are very supportive when bands uh, start up, especially with their friends. I think that moving to New York though just made me feel like I didn't have to worry about what people thought really because I didn't know anyone when I first moved. And you want to introduce your band? Yeah over on lead guitar we've got Julian Powell and then on drums we've got Ryan Elwell and on the bass we've got Graham Getz. Well, welcome to all of you. I have listened to both your early recordings and the music that you've made with the band. And from your perspective, how do you feel like working with the band has changed the sound and dynamic of the songs that you write? I think it just sounds a lot bigger because um, live, it's you know, it comes out being a lot bigger, which is something I hadn't really ever thought about trying to do before I had a band backing me. Whereas now, it's like I know it can sound really big, so it's it like kind of makes me want to make the recording sound really big too, I guess. You've talked in interviews about how you picture a song um, through the full phase of it, um, even all the way through to the end where you were making a video. So obviously you were making music by yourself for a while and uh, a little less to envision in terms of the piecing together different layers of the music. Um, Tell me a little bit about how that works for you because obviously as you learn more along the way, that vision changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's. I think I just write very imagery based. So when I'm writing it, it's not necessarily I have like a whole. It's more of like a mood board, I guess, than a like a whole video or a whole image story pieced out together. It's more like I can picture the like coloring and the mood and the lighting of like how I would want a video to be. It's like I can kind of get the aesthetic in my brain. Um, like little snapshots of what I would want the video to have uh, rather than, you know, having a whole, I'm not a director. I can't like plan out a whole video in my head. I'm more of like a big idea type person, I think. Well, lots of big ideas on this record, Clean. We're so excited to have Soccer Mommy live in studio. Want to play a couple more songs? Yeah. This one's called Cool.
That is Soccer Mommy, the song Cool from the new album Clean out on Fat Possum Records. And I'm going to do a guitar change there. This next song, are you going to play Scorpio Rising? Yes. A lot of people uh, talk about this, uh, and I've heard people went as a listener feel like this is the centerpiece of the record. Does that resonate for you? Yeah, definitely. I think it definitely is the centerpiece mm -hmm. of it all. It ties everything together. All right. It's Scorpio Rising. We're live in the KEXP studios with Soccer Mommy.
So nice. Soccer Mommy live on KEXP. Thank you so much. That sounded fantastic. Yeah, thank you. It's great to have all of you here. And the new album, Clean, out on Fat Possum Records. Come back soon. Of course, thanks. You've got to tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.